update time. Hey guys, it's your local Unity news reporter here. And today I just want to announce that Unity 19.3 has been released. It's available in beta. And it was actually announced last night after my Unity live stream ended, which obviously if you guys want to check it out, it's linked in the description. So for this video, I've gathered a list of features and improvements you guys are going to want to know before entering Unity 2019.3. If you have any questions or need help, let us know in the comment section and ask us in the Discord server, which you can join by going to the link in the description, which basically is a community where we talk about game development, so feel free to join. Now, I'm going to get the blog post ready and then basically quote some of the things that Unity has written in there and I'm going to show you in the editor, so in Unity editor, what is new and what's been updated. But first, this video is brought to you by Dennis Panjura. Dennis is an amazing tutor for game development who has made the complete C Sharp Masterclass course on Udemy. This course will teach you everything from the fundamentals of programming using C Sharp to creating video games using C Sharp and Unity. You'll get to understand how OOP or object oriented programming works and how to use it. You will also learn about databases, servers, how to handle errors and avoid them, WPF and so much more. The course features 29 hours of on demand video, 16 articles and 109 downloadable resources which is just insane. You can get the masterclass with a huge discount by simply clicking the link in the description box of this video. All right, with that being said, news time. Alrighty folks, so get ready, smash like on this video if you guys enjoy these news types of videos and let's get started. All right, so let me begin by just quoting them very quickly with what they say in the blog post as a first sentence. So quote, the last beta release of the 2019 cycle, Unity 2019.3b is here and it comes packed with new features, improvements and a completely refreshed interface. Download it to get an early look at these highlights as well as to explore the new input system post-processing in the universal render pipeline formerly known as the LWRP or the lightweight render pipeline which we're going to talk about in this video, physics updates, faster in editor iteration times, and the debut of ray tracing in Unity. That's right. So it's going to be a super big, it is a super big version and I'm really excited to dive into it. So in case you guys don't know how to get access to the latest version of Unity 2019.3, you can basically go on the Unity Hub, which is linked in the description if you guys don't have it installed, so don't worry. And then you simply have to go to installs, add latest pre-releases, and there it is. So you're gonna be able to find 2019.3 right there. Cool, so I'm gonna get started by reading off the blog post for editor updates and then continue on with programming, graphics, etc. so different categories. But don't worry, I'll let you guys know once we're changing topics. So first and foremost, the new editor UI, which everybody has been looking forward to, including me, I'm really excited for this. So this is what they say, quote, the updated editor UI includes uniform icons that convey concepts more clearly and with full high DPI support. The UI also features a new font, Inter, which is more legible and scales well across many different UIs and display types. We have also added visual feedback for the hover state control, which improves usability and makes the UI more responsive. I think the new UI looks really, really cool and it looks more modern, whereas the older UI kind of looked a little bit old and, you know, not very refreshed. So I like this. And let me know actually in comments, guys, what you feel about this. Do you like it or do you not like it? They have also added enter play mode options, which you can find in project settings, editor, enter play mode options, which I am also showing on screen right now as an experimental feature. So these options allow you to disable domain and or scene reloading from the enter play mode process when there are no code changes. This makes it much faster for you to prototype and iterate and based on Unity's test results actually, which is also stated on the blog post, this update can save you up to 50 to 90% of iteration time depending on your project. You can also access this feature through an API and a callback if you want to reset the game state before entering play mode. And for API and a callback, they were linking to a brand new page. So I'm gonna include that link in the description because I'm a nice guy like that. <laughs> You're welcome. And here's a very nice graph that represents the seconds it took for the Unity editor to enter play mode, smaller number are obviously better and you can see that the gray fields are basically for no scene reload 
which is the new system, whereas blue is for current. And you can see on AA production, it took 24.5 seconds with the current system in place. And then they had it without scene reloading, which literally took 2.2 seconds, which is insane. And you can see FPS sample, Mega City, and an empty project as well, all have their huge massive differences in between. Addressable assets for teams producing complex live content is also now available because this release includes the new scriptable build pipeline, which gives you an easy way to load assets by address while also handling asset management overhead by simplifying content pack creation and deployment. You can learn more about this system through the link in the description. They've also upgraded the physics library from version 3.4 to 4.1. This includes the new temporal gauss side. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that word. Google, how do you say this word? gauss idle. Wait, let me hear that again. gauss idle. Jesus Christ. Google Translate in slow motion sounds so creepy. gauss idle. All right, you can stop now. <laughs> But yes, this includes the new temporal gauss idol solver, which allows joints to be more resistant to overstretch and prevent some erratic behavior previously seen during simulation. To enable the new solver, you just had to go to project settings and then enter physics. All right, so next up, we're going to talk about authoring tools and technology, and we're going to get started with the package manager. You will notice some changes and improvements made to the package manager. And for example, you can now install packages from a Git repository via a URL. You can also now manage your asset store asset collection directly through the package manager. This view works similarly to the my assets view on your asset store account. You can import what you need for your project from there, which is insane. That's a really cool update. There are some updates for the animation rigging in Unity as well, because you can now preview your animation rigging and keyframing in timeline for faster iteration and to take advantage of timeline tools. This enables powerful multi-track layered animation workflows. Using Unity 2019.3, animators can blend multiple clips with animated rig overrides to author unique animations. These tools can also be used to assemble cinematic sequences with multiple characters, props, and cameras with the added ability to modify the animation clips using rig constraints from the animation rigging package. The level designer squad of Saiku's community unite because we are having a terrain update. New with this release, you can now create holes in your terrains finally, making it easier to create caves, wells, or trenches. This works seamlessly with other Unity systems like physics, navigation mesh, or light mapping. Programmers can also access the terrain hole data through scripting and implement custom terrain logic. I mean, quite literally, this is one of the features that have been so anticipated for so long, so I'm really happy that Unity has finally implemented this, and I'm sure Sure, I'm gonna be able to use it in many of my level design videos. If you guys are excited to smash like and let me know in the comments what you guys are gonna do with terrain holes. Moving on, the particle system now supports C sharp job system and it is possible to manipulate particle data using the C sharp job system without having to copy the code data between a script and a native code. It includes support for the burst compiler and jobs dependencies. Graphics updates. Okay, so bear with me here because this is a huge update, a massive change. This is what they say, quote, while we only highlight a few <laughs> voice crack, <laughs> it was so important that my voice just dipped out. While we only highlight a few graphics features in the beta, we are making plenty of progress in the high definition render pipeline HDRP and the universal render pipeline known as lightweight render pipeline before 2019.3. So that's correct. Universal render pipeline is the brand new name which takes over the lightweight render pipeline. So just don't get confused when you're creating a new project using Unity 2019.3 because you're no longer gonna see lightweight render pipeline in the list because it's now just been renamed. So it doesn't mean that they have taken it away or anything. It's been renamed and it's there. 
Um, I actually like this change because the universal render pipeline, because of the name of universal, I just feel like it sounds more broad and general for any kind of project to make use of, which I like more than lightweight render pipeline because lightweight was kind of like, what am I supposed to use this for when there is HDRP? So you had to like explain to people like, oh yeah, mobile games can use this. Um, but I like the name change. Let me know in the comments if you like it as well. The universal render pipeline works with any Unity platform you want to target while giving you the best performance. Unity say that they have completely revamped post-processing for Universal. It is now integrated directly into the pipeline, bringing greater performance. Features in Universal post-processing include anti-aliasing, depth of field, camera motion blur, panini projection, bloom, lens distortion, chromatic aberration, color grading and tone mapping, vignette, film grain, 8-bit dithering. And I feel like that's a very strong list of post-processings that have been revamped for Universal, so it is now more viable for making use in mobile games, etc. So it's really cool to hear that. On top of that, just like in post-processing with HDRP or the high definition render pipeline, the post-processing in universal render pipeline also relies on the volume framework that is available in the core RP shader library, which basically means that it now supports volume so you can have multiple different volumes of post-processing even in universal. Now, moving on, this is super exciting as well. Ray tracing in HDRP. So you heard it correct. Designed for the high definition render pipeline, the DXR API, which is a preview feature for now, in the HDRP package targets applications for the engineering and architecture industries. Some of the implementations included are the directional and area shadows, GI, which stands for global illumination, reflections, and transparencies. In the Unity editor, you can find ray tracing shaders and ray tracing acceleration structures with the API needed to create, build, and update the structures and dispatch or bind properties for the shaders. And I mean, it's very clear at this point that Unity is also like moving really fastly and quickly into the, the graphics area of game development. And not only does it look good right now, but they're trying to improve and get like basically just catch up on the latest trends, which I really appreciate coming from a graphical and, you know, level design kind of background. So graphics really are eye candy for me and I really value that. So it's super fun to hear that. Speaking of graphics, there are also some updates made to the lighting in Unity and light probes from different additively loaded scenes can now be merged, making it easier to handle lighting for large scenes that are broken up into smaller chunks. Main thread performance of the progressive light mapper has been vastly improved, leading to smoother editor interaction when baking. The new light map exposure slider will show up as a scene view swatch when entering light map preview scene modes. This will help you to assess different HDR light maps better. You can find the same slider in the light map. <laughs> yes, you can find it in the light map preview window. Light maps are awesome. Love you, light maps. Two new light shapes have been added to the progressive light mapper, which correspond with HDRP's box and pyramid light shapes for spotlights. Both shapes can be entirely baked or used as mixed lights with full support for shadow masks. Sometimes it can become a little challenging to get smooth lighting with light probes in some scenes. For that reason, there is now support for more flexible sample counts for light probes, which can improve probe quality in scenes with emissives or other difficult lighting conditions. And next up, we have the platforms updates. So first and foremost, the new input system. They have released the preview version of the new input system, which lets you use any input device to control your Unity content. It is more powerful, flexible, and configurable than the traditional input manager. You can try it out and let Unity know what you think on the forum, which is very important, you guys, because you have the option to giving the feedback to the folks at Unity and let them know what you think of the feature and let let them know if you find any bugs. You can now also insert features powered by Unity directly into your native mobile applications. These features include, but aren't limited to, 
3D or 2D real-time rendering functions such as augmented reality or AR, 2D minigames or 3D models. You can integrate the Unity runtime components and your content in a native platform project as well. The Unity runtime library exposes controls to manage when and how to load, activate, unload within the native application. There is now also on-demand rendering, which is a feature that lets you control the rendering loop independently from the rest of the subsystems of Unity. This means you have more control to lower power consumption and prevent thermal CPU throttling. All right, so that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little review of Unity 2019.3. If you did and want to see more, make sure to smash a like on this video and subscribe for more videos. I was always very interested and really excited for the new theme and the new editor UI for Unity. So now that it's available, at least in beta, I'm super happy to see it and actually get my hands on it. Um, but let me know in the comments what you guys have been looking forward to the most and what you think is most exciting exciting with this release. If you have any questions or need help, let us know in the comments. And also we have a Discord server with over 10,000 like-minded game developers where we talk about game development in general, Unity, share more Unity news, Unity tips, etc. So if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff and being a part of the community, make sure to join by going to the link in the description below or simply go to discord.gg forward slash polyrealm. And on that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. I would also like to give a thanks to all of our incredible Patreon supporters from July and special thanks to Coopla, Infinity PBR, Flu Joey, Academy of Games.com, Sebastian Vaggy, Glasswell Entertainment, Couch Ferret, Tim Gunn, and Steven Eddy. You guys are awesome. <laughs>